the Raptors Weekly for the week of February the 22nd. Zarar is here, as usual, and joined by Sam, who has been let out of his cage by his wife. Uh, Sam, h- how much time you got here? I don't know. <laughs> you got an approximation? Are you going to be okay for the next 40 minutes or so? I should be fine. Okay, good, good. Also joining us today is the man who works in the shadows but not on the site. <laughs> it's uh, William Liu. Hey, Will. Big Will. I've emerged from the shadows to uh, speak on this podcast. As you do on every podcast. Do check out Will's uh, soothing and calm voice, which has uh, been known to heal babies uh, on on Friday as well, when he does the Raptors Weekly Extra podcast with Will. Uh, So, Will, we we just finished watching the, uh, what is it, the the Grizzlies game? But before we get to that, let's talk about the Bulls game, because that's what's bugging me a little bit over the last couple days. I think it's our 40th straight loss to the Bulls, um, and um, this one was without Jimmy Butler. And I remember, like, during that 13-game streak, uh, even, though, even though we were winning, like, you know, all these games in a row, that Cleveland loss that preceded it and the two Bulls losses that preceded it always bugged me because they were kind of, they were like, yeah, you can, beat the, you can beat the so-so teams, but not the big teams. And then after the All-Star break, the Bulls game happened. No Jimmy Butler. The Raptors had a lead in that game for a majority of the time. But then third quarter, fourth quarter, what, what, what happened, Will? I don't know, man. At this point, I don't know why the Raptors can't beat the Bulls. Like you said, they were shorthanded. No Butler, no Noah, no Miritich. Uh, man, they were playing that. random guys off the street. Christian Felicio or Cristiano Felicio, who's even heard of this guy? Is he an Italian singer, isn't he? Uh, I don't think. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe he's got some pipes. I don't know, man. Yeah, the Raptors, they, I, they're just, their offense just grinds to a halt against um, the Bulls. And I thought, actually, their defense was okay. They drop 106 than, points, though. That's true, yeah. That's true. It's just, I don't know, man. Their defense fell apart. I mean, oh man, Doug, Mc, Doug McDermott kept back-cutting all of, all, all of the Raptors' wings. Like, it was stupid. I feel like the hot, the Bulls got really hot from mid-range as well. But, I mean, like, these are excuses. Like, every single time the Raptors play the Bulls, some kind of craziness happens. And the Raptors end up blowing their leads. This is the third straight time it's happened this year now. Hmm. Well, I, I had the post-game duties for this one, and uh, I uh, I fulfilled them by uh, focusing on a c- couple of different plays that just just spoke to the lack of focus in that second half. And there was there was a Bismack Biombo screen there in the fourth quarter, which uh, which was really just perplexing because he just basically took out somebody while the ball was out of bounds. Terrence Ross running into people, some really bad coverage on defense in transition, and then and then Sam, uh, your boy Demar Derozan was like six for fifty in this game, and Wait, just what? taking some taking some very very I, not, of, of course, they're questionable shots, but they're shots that kind of show a lack of trust in his teammates sometimes. And even though we won the Grizzlies game, you kind of sh- saw shades of that again. I, that feels strong. No trust in your teammates. Like, the one thing this team... Well, correct me then. Here. Correct me. What is it then? Well, it was just bad shooting, man. Mm-hmm. Can it Can it just be bad shooting? Can, can, can't the Bulls, the lack of ability to beat the Bulls, we just, they have our number... For no other reason than we just don't play against the Bulls and the Rosen and have a good game. I can I kind of feel that it's weighing on him as well that he's not beating some of the some of the better teams in the Eastern Conference and when the uh, going that. gets a little tight, uh, he wants to prove himself as a player and and the Raptors as a contender. So he he takes it upon himself to kind of do too much. I don't think it's born out of selfishness or or mistrust. I think it's more like he wants the Raptors to do well, and he feels that him taking over is the best way to do it. And time and time again, we know that the that, that that's that's not the formula for success for the Raptors. No, but um, I mean, it's getting to that point where you're where you need to start showing what you have against other teams in the East, especially teams you're going to meet in the playoffs. Um, I I wasn't confident after that loss. I'm still not so confident. Um, heading into the playoffs, but, you know. Hmm. So, Will? So, uh, yeah, uh, no, I'm still here, Sam. I'm still here. Uh, Will, uh, the, the, Bull, the Bulls lost, man. Is, is it bugging you, or is it uh, is it just like one of those things that, nah, you just Bulls are a good team? No, man, I hate the Bulls at this point. Yeah. it's uh, They've gone to where the Celtics used to be. Yeah. You know, those, like, KG Celtics, the Raptors just couldn't beat them. Like, and just, uh, I mean, back then, at least, the KG Celtics were obviously much better than the Raptors were, but... In this case, the Raptors are better, man. They're, they should be better than the Bulls. And it, it worries me that, uh, you know, for whatever reason, and it's kind of unexplainable. you got different things happening every single time. But, uh, yeah, the Raptors, you know, they could play the Bulls in the first round. And hey, 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 I'll put one reason forth. It's, okay. it's, it's Luis Scola and JV playing at the same time. 
Yeah. And when, when one of them falls for a pump fake, it's like a domino <laughs> effect where like the entire team may as well just be sitting on the ground because it's that easy for the offense to score. Yep, yeah, that's a big problem. You have that's it's the slowest front court in the league ever. Ever maybe. It's so slow. And you know, at least JV was he got it going early in that game against the Bulls. Uh Pau Gasol was not interested in picking up fouls or playing defense. Yeah, and JV just kind of got whatever he wanted. And then in the second half, I mean, they solved it pretty easily. Just give it to Powell, you know, on the high post. Do a pump fake. JV runs. Scola runs, and then it's over. Yeah, it's and over. that's what the Bulls kind of did. And and like guys like like McDermott. I mean, what did you think of the the, the defense the Raptors played on him? Where like was it like was he just like you know, just uh, just hot on that night, or would you say you saw something that the Raptors are doing uh, incorrectly? I think they just didn't take him seriously. Honestly, yeah. like yeah. they just let him back cut so many times. He's not exactly Clay Thompson or anything like yeah. that. He's just. Like an average wing, he's not even quick or anything like that, but he just kept, you know, getting by. And the, and the Raptors tried a lot of guys on him. Uh, T. Ross, you know, he failed all, many times. Year up until that game? No, it's a career high. Oh. No, I mean, yeah. like, before that game, oh. for the season, did he have 30 points? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been in the rotation a bit. But, yeah, I mean, look, Doug McDermott's not a good player. Raptors tried a lot of guys on him, and they just the same thing kept happening. He just kept back cutting, and or in the case against Kyle Lowry, McDermott just shot over Lowry because he's got like six, seven inches on him. Mm. And, yeah. and and the Raptors obviously chose not to make a move at the deadline, and uh, like one of the spots they were looking at was uh, was power forward, and and in this game uh, you saw like Bobby Portis kind of kill the Raptors, you know, with, with just with his strength inside, and and as great as Patrick Patterson's been over the last. Uh, two months, I want to say, or a month and a half at least, to shooting the three and all that, you saw that in certain situations against Snell in the block or, or when, when, when he gets back down, even from the, from the high elbow, he, he doesn't really have the strength to contend with guys like Gibson and, uh, and, uh, and Portis. And, and it kind of showed, even though Patterson was like 5 for 10 in this game, he, he gave up a lot on defense there, Sam. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, he can't bang in the low post, I think is what it is. He's not that kind of guy. Um, we could use a guy like that. We had opportunities at the deadline. Um, we've had opportunities since last year, and we don't want to do anything about it. So I think this is what we have to live with and hope for the best. Well, cl- clearly, I mean, like, when we were talking about the deadline, I, I know Will was in tears on Twitter and like very, very throwing his toys <laughs> outside the pram. Right. So very, very, very much agitated. I, I guess somebody had taken his toys away. Um, it, it was. What was the reason? Is it that? Like what? What was your reason for being so upset, Will? Was is it? What was it? Tell me. Tell me. I wasn't that upset. Lay down guys. on the uh, lay down on the rapcast couch and tell us what's going on. Lay it down. Lay All it right, down, buddy. Look, it's uh. I'll play some music. I, I think I think I've characterized the the trade deadline as a failure uh, for for many, you know, in many different outlets now, and. I guess that sounds harsher than what I mean it to to come out as, because from all from all accounts, the Raptors just didn't have the opportunity to make these deals. It's not like Masai Ujiri was hoarding his assets and saying, "No, I'm not trading a first round pick or anything like that." It's just it the, feels uh, like he did that though. Will no, no, no. It, it seems like teams were really asking for like a ton, like unreasonably a lot. I mean, Ryan Anderson, for example, apparently. You know, if you piece the reports together, it seems like the Pelicans were asking for Patrick Patterson and the Knicks pick. Like, that's ridiculous for a rental of, you know, Ryan Anderson. Same thing for goes for Thad Young. And Thad Young is a nice player, but I don't know, man. That's 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 a lot to pay for Thad Young. So I think if a trade could have been made used, like without Patterson or even with Patterson um, to get a significant upgrade, yeah, then the Raptors, you know, probably would have made that deal. And I think... You know, Masai Jury talked about it many times, heading into the deadline. We're going to trade for power forward. You know, we're, and that's a position weakness. And then it just sucks because they could have used an upgrade and they didn't even get an opportunity to do so. So, you know, at the end of the day, they did fail on their, their goal, which is their stated goal, which was to upgrade a power forward. And now I'm getting nightmares about, in the playoffs, Luis Scola playing <laughs> significant minutes. Well, Significant yeah. minutes. Yeah. And um, we're relying on those minutes. Yeah. Well, I think I think the uh, Chicago matchup that we just saw and the Cleveland Tristan Thompson thing is what kind of looms ahead of, for the Raptors uh, if if they even get that far. But but it, it it seemed like they did not have any interest. In, they only had interest in guys who could kind of shoot, and um, th- there was absolutely no interest in Markeith Morris, which was surprising because apparently they didn't even call Phoenix. And when when, when you say will like the, the asking price was too high, yeah, what what Washington paid for Morris didn't seem too high. 
not high at all. Humphreys, give me a break. Okay, Sorry. well, I mean, look, Marquise Morris. There's a there's a gamble beyond just his you know playing abilities. He, it's a very stable locker room. Let's say you take a guy like pa- Patrick Patterson, who uh, Zach Lowe called the glue guy. Apparently, that's how the Raptors view him. Mm. You know, he's a strong locker room presence, Patrick Patterson, and mm. then you replace that with Marquise Morris. I mean, it's a huge gamble, right? It's it? a that. Mm-hmm. And, so I mean, yeah, they probably could have picked up for Marquise Morris because they had definitely had the package that Washington gave up, which was just a top nine protective first round pick and mm-hmm. some filler salary. They could have made that happen, but I think that that was probably just too risky. And it's something that that kind of volatile character is best served for a really desperate team like the Wizards, who ultimately end up getting him. Mm-hmm. Sa- Sam, what were your thoughts there on that? So I I'm, I wasn't too I, actually I wasn't at all upset that we we passed on Mark Eve, but I don't want to add him at this point. Um, I guess my concern is, have you guys looked at like the draft boards for the next couple of years and seen what the Celtics and Philly going to be able to do? Like they have so many picks over the next few years. I think that played a big big part into the inability to land somebody, and that makes me really nervous, right? What um, makes you nervous? Like what? The, so, the, the, so, the, yeah. So, I mean, over the next few drafts, the Celtics and, and Sixers have a lot of picks that okay. they can't use, right? They have a lot of salary space to take on players. Like, they're they're positioning themselves to be able to package something together to, together to get their star, mm-hmm. to get that guy, right? And they're going to throw three, four first-rounders, second-rounders, and, you know, whatever they have into these big packages to get their guy that they want, right? Um, which is going to make the Raptors picks less valuable. I don't know. Like You're just competing in a market where there's a lot of okay. draft picks that are for sale. Mm-hmm. And the inability to get rid of them at the, at the deadline might come back to haunt us in the offseason mm-hmm. when you know, we can't even package them at that point to get something that we need. So, so basically, so basically the, the supply of picks is, is going to yeah. be greater than the demand. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, that was actually my next uh, my next item here in this in this notepad I have here for the podcast. Is is, is that like do you think uh, or to either of you do, do you think Ujiri feels that he can get more for the same assets in the summer than he can now? Like he he made some comments about that that he likes to rebuild in the summer where he has a full view of the team. But but do you think will these are depreciating assets or what are your thoughts there? Uh. I mean, could he get more? Probably. It just seems like this trade deadline was just really dead and dry. I mean, just look at it. Not many big deals happen. Um, but at the same time, what is more? Like, more in the summer would mean, like, there's an opportunity cost of passing up on this one, right? And, again, we don't know what necessarily deal, the, what deals are out there. All we know is apparently they were kind of unreasonable. Um, but... I mean, the Raptors have a significant chance to do something right here. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I think this is probably the best Raptors team I've seen. And, you know, on both sides of the floor, they're very solid. You got Larry and DeRozan playing at the peak of their careers. Yep. You don't know how many years of Larry's prime you have left. Um, getting an upgrade at power forward, if there was one available at a reasonable price, I think they probably would have done it, but there apparently wasn't. So I guess we'll Why does it have to be a reasonable price, though, is what I'm saying. Like... But, I mean, like, doing something crazy, like trading Patterson and the Knicks pick for Ryan Anderson, that doesn't make any sense. Sure. Even even if you do factor in, like, this, the, the timeline of no, the star what, players. What about, what, about, what about James Johnson plus, like, a, a first and two seconds? For I mean, that's a lot, right? Apparently that wasn't on – I don't know. Apparently okay, let, let, let's, let, let's step back. So, so, so Will, does yeah. Ryan Anderson over Patrick Patterson – if you just replace the two right now, forget about the pick. Just take Patrick Patterson out, Ryan Anderson in. Are the Raptors a better team? It's yeah. debatable. They're a better offensive team. Sam, what way do you think? Better, way better offensive team. Way better offensive team. So, yeah. But overall, do, do you think do you think it's a it's it's a, it's a good move, Sam? Probably, probably, probably even overall. I mean, okay, if if it's even, then he's okay to stand pat. So, to where I was coming from was like when when I looked at what's out there in Ryan Anderson. I like Ryan Anderson. I think he would he would actually spread the floor proper. Uh, but but yeah, yeah he, he's not as good a defender as Patterson. And, but, or Morris, I'm not. I'm not heartbroken about whatever. He's got some character issues, and he, and he, and he when he, he walked off on a hoverboard and was coming out of the arena, that was position, hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> he had the handler pick up yeah. the hoverboard for him. And I, yeah. embarrassing. And he didn't even like tell him to pick it up. He just kind of like shoved it there, and like he just the handler kind of knew that he had to pick it up. Dude, uh, legend. 
And then, and then there was uh, Thad Young, who I love, who, who Sam, you and I have both uh, fantasized about Thad Young in, in many different. Yeah, Why do you guys for, like for, Thad Young so well, much? Hang on, hang on. This is like way back when there was a dearth of power forwards at, at, at the Raptors, right? right? So we always liked Th- Thad Young. But why Thad Young is suddenly becoming the marquee item in this trade deadline makes no sense to me because he could have been had for a lot cheaper last summer or the summer before that. The guy that I wanted the Raptors to focus on, and for me it was like this guy or bust or don't do anything because it doesn't matter, was Al Horford. I was like, if you got to throw your money at something, your picks at something, even if it, it turns out to be a rent player try Al Horford. Because Absolutely. other than that, everything was basically a lateral move or a slightly, arguably – little better it makes the Raptors a little better team like like Ryan Anderson again you guys can't even agree on that so for me once Horford what was clear that 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 wasn't happening I don't know what the situation they were what the Hawks were trying to do but once that was happening I was like fine just just don't do anything it doesn't really matter to me Will what's going on with Horford uh it's unclear as to whether he was actually on the market or not I think for one the Hawks had a lot of to benefit for shopping him around, kind of quote unquote, because huh. this way they get a, they get to gauge teams' interest in Horford, and then that way they have a clear picture of what to expect when he's a free agent next summer. Although, I think it's pretty clear that he's going to get the max contract max. regardless. Yeah. So, it's a, I, 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 yeah. so, like, <laughs> in, I mean, in yeah. the weak free agent class. Well, I mean, weakish free agent free agent year with lots of money going around, like. Someone's going to give him that money. Who has a better chance of getting the max, DeMar DeRozan or, or Al Horford? They're oh. equal. They're both 100%. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's not even – so that, that theory that the Hawks are like looking at what he, they might – no, it's it's bullshit. Well, I mean, okay, fine. Uh, but I, I don't think – I'm not convinced that the Hawks actually want to deal Al Horford. I think that they know if they can hold on to his bird rights, they can probably re-sign him because let's be honest. He's 30 years old. If he gets a max contract with bird rights, he gets a fifth year for $30 million. That's yep. pretty important to him. If you get that – that means you can keep Al Horford, and then if you know if the things things go south a little bit next year, then you could trade Al Horford next year, but with like certainty on his contract. I think you'll get more. So I think the Hawks never really intended to trade Al Horford. Mm-hmm. He wasn't really available. Mm-hmm. So a 31-year-old Al Horford with a contract fetches you more than a 30-year-old uh, Al Horford who's out of contract in six months or in four months. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Sam, you want to debate him on that one, or are you going to? No, you know, no, I don't want to debate him. Right. It sounds about right, but but I, I do want to go back to Ryan Anderson though. Oh, really? Go ahead. So, I mean, you have his bird rights too in the summer. Who right? cares? So who cares? What do you mean that, that fifth year, or whatever? Like, who knows? I'm just saying it's not a non-asset at that point either, right? Well, Real, I mean, it's no, it's no. an asset only. For you, for the Raptors, I mean, yeah. it's not like they can trade his bird rights after this. No, so, but I'm just I saying. Mean, it seems like Ryan Anderson is apparently going to get like twenty million dollars a year next year. Oh my God, just nuts. It's Ryan insane. Anderson, like he's he's Dude, not I, healthy. I would have sacrificed a first round pick if if that gave us a puncher's chance against Clyde Cleveland in the Eastern Conference Finals. Tell me who wouldn't in Toronto. Who tell me who wouldn't in Toronto? I'm, yeah, I I agree. If it was just a first round pick and you could somehow keep Patrick Patterson. I would probably I have really also sprung for Ryan Anderson, yeah. I really think you could have kept Patrick Patterson. Mm-hmm. Guys, it, it just dawned on me that all this money being thrown around, Toronto's even a more attractive place because of the exchange rate. They're making yeah. like $26 million Canadian dollars a year. So that's 30%. Like, something like that. That's crazy, yeah. man. We don't get the good cable, though. And and, and that's, that, <laughs> that's, that's probably worth going through customs. There you go. Yeah. Sure. All right, so uh, I just saw an Instagram post of Delonte West basically running around a parking lot in a hospital gown, completely high. Oh, no. Yeah, it's uh, oh, it's not good. Man, it's not bad. good. Uh, Delonte West being the man who uh, allegedly banged Oof. LeBron's mom, I think it was. Was was that, was that the rumor? Yeah. Um. Yeah. And he he was a half decent player, but now he's like uh just just a mess. And uh, some guy recognized him in a parking lot, and, and they go, "Are you Delonte West?" And he's like, "Yeah, but I'm not about that life anymore," is what he said. So he's, yeah. he's he's about the roaming around in parking lights. It's, it's kind of sad, man. I'm trying to he's make a joke. He's off his man. He's off his man. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's uh, before we get to our our our, our uh, marquee topic, which is Ronald Roberts versus Anthony Bennett, uh, let's talk about the uh, Memphis Grizzlies uh, game that the Raptors uh, won on uh, Sunday night. Uh, what was the final score here, Will? I'm just trying to pull it up. Uh, I think it was uh, 98. 98. 98. 85. 85. Mm. Yeah. So I, I've seen that uh, that I noticed that uh, Memphis has acquired the. I want to call this guy the the prime thug of the NBA, which oh, is uh, Matt Barnes. <laughs> like, is he like is 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 there like they, they got Lance Stevenson 
and Matt Barnes on the same team. And I think Matt Barnes should basically be locked away. Like he's a, he's not fit to roam free in society. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Come on. That's a serious thing to say, man. The guy is always like getting into trouble, man, with ex with players, with He's coaches. He's misunderstood, Zarr. He's misunderstood. Just a complete mess. Just the, the 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 fouling he did today. I'm I'm, I'm glad DeRozan took him to school on that baseline. He pulled the Kobe move on him. I was so happy. That's one guy I cannot stand, man. Just just a thug. Anyway, so so I'm glad oh, yeah. I'm glad the Raptors won this one. It was a uh, um, it was uh, it was it, it it felt better. Trying to get us all fired let's on this fuck podcast. Matt Barnes, yeah. That's yeah. 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 Uh, well, let's talk about uh, let's talk about uh, the performer here. So uh, Valanciunas, man, uh, four for seven again, strong game, ten points, twelve rebounds. A lot of rebounds to be had in this game, Sam. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <There is. laughs> what the Memphis, Memphis is like a half a team. What, like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> they have nobody who can really score the ball, so yeah. they're they, going to be a lot of shots. Yeah, they did have uh, uh, Gasol missing, and they also had um, uh, Tony Allen out. So uh, they shot 37% here. Raptors shot 41%. Tons of rebounds to be had. But Valanciunas was there, man. He was effective again. Uh, somewhat acceptable defensive performance again. Bismack Biombo had a better showing. Nine rebounds off the bench. He's been kind of kind of uh, taking a backseat of late, but but he, he, had, he had a few nice plays here. Had, the, had that put-back dunk after the Lowry drive. Uh, the Raptors got... A gritty game, Will, overall, and the Raptors kind of had to play physical to uh, to see this one out. Yeah, and the Grizzlies, like they like to play this half-court style game, and, and the Raptors have had a lot of success against the Grizzlies over the last two and a half years, uh, because that's kind of how the Raptors also would like to play, except mm-hmm. the Raptors are better at offense, yeah. um, significantly so. So, yeah, I thought this, inter- this uh, version of the Grizzlies were very interesting. Their second unit was basically just Lance Stevenson dribbling the ball for like for hours mm-hmm. and then occasionally Mario Chalmers would come in and save the day. Like, man, if you're talking about Mario Chalmers is going to save the day for you, this is not a good team. And I'm not even sure if the Grizzlies can hold on to a playoff spot. If this is how they're going to play. Mario no Chalmers way. had uh, a team high 15 shot attempts in 19 minutes. The guy was basically shooting at a really <laughs> Scola rate. Yeah. He missed yeah. 10 of them too. He was missing a shot every half. It, it didn't matter though. It didn't matter. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I don't know if you noticed, uh, Will, that on the broadcast today, uh, uh, Jack and uh, Matt were kind of ripping on Luis Scola a lot. Uh, they were basically comparing his shot attempts to his minutes played and basically saying how he basically shoots too much. And uh, did, you, did, you, did, you, did you catch that vibe there? Well, he did open the game with five attempts <laughs> uh, in five minutes, and he hit one of them, and it was a, like like a layup. Yeah, I mean, Luis Scola is a, a giant hole in the Raptors lineup. And it's not his fault. Seems like a really nice guy. If you, uh, Keon wrote this great, uh, one-on-one interview, mm, conduct yep. this one-on-one interview. That was really good. Check that out. But, uh, and Louis Scola sounds like a great man, great veteran presence. I sense a everything. butt coming here. Yeah. Yeah. But he's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. just it. He's not, he's not fit to start. Uh, his three point shot has seems to have gone away a little bit. And, uh, his just his defense, man, especially his defense paired with, Yona. Jonas Valanciunas. Like, Horrible. JV has big weaknesses on defense too, but you can't exacerbate that by putting basically two Jonas's on the court yeah. and one that's not even big in, in Scola, right? So Jonas and poor man Jonas. Yeah. yeah. And, and the Raptors have a tendency to also send help like via Luis Scola. Like he's the double teamer on, on on a lot of possessions, which makes no sense because he cannot recover at all. So all, all the offense has to do is make like one pass to the other side and it's a... It's basically, you know, uh, free for all on, on that side. So I, I they're don't. They're just gambling. They're just gambling on that, though. Yeah, whatever it is, it, it's, it's not making a lot of any... sense. Yeah, yeah. And, and there was a stat that, like, as soon as like James Johnson and Luis Scola both went out of the game in that third quarter, and the rapper just immediately went on like a, on, on like a seven nothing run and changed the game around. And 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 like I didn't notice it at the time, but that actually was the case. And uh, as soon as you got Biombo in there, uh, the Memphis isn't a great, um, you know, offensive team. So I don't know. It it, it, it didn't really. It didn't really impact us so much, but yeah, Luis Scola should not be starting, man. And when I advocated for him being here at that in the off season, it was about, you know, basically do a Chuck Hayes plus role, maybe yeah. play like ten minutes a game. But now it's becoming into like a full time starter gig, and uh, this happens a lot with the Raptors. You might notice like like previous players like like Alan Anderson, Antoine Wright, all these guys who had like bit parts to play became huge parts of the team. Michael and that, Curry, Michael Curry, and, and <laughs> Michael Curry, where did you get that one from? Man? <laughs> I just, oh my I, god! I get that much. Very much. I get 
<laughs> oh my god. Yes, Michael Curry as well. Uh Chris Child comes to mind. So John Salmons. Oh my god, the list goes on, right? I mean, but the difference yeah. is that in in that era it was okay because the team was a bit shit. Now the team is good and Luis Scola has no reason to play more than like 10, 12 minutes a game. Sam, Sam, o- over to you, man. Give me give me, yeah, give me the no, dish on this. I just I just equated him to Michael Curry, man. That that tells you everything you need to know about what we need from Scola on a game to game basis. Did he ever become a head coach? He he did some assistant coach at yeah. uh, Detroit, I even think, right? Yeah. Remember, he was one of those guys that every time he played, he's like, "Oh, he's a future head coach, definitely smartest guy yeah. on the court." And but it never really happened. They they shoveled a lot of shit into him at that time about Michael Curry and what he brings to the court, and we saw absolutely nothing. Yeah. Nothing. He could even hit like layups. I mean, I have more athletic ability than he did. Actually, I was I was at All Star Weekend, and speaking of coaches, I, I know we're going on a big tangent, and we'll sometime maybe come back to rapper talk. But uh, I was talking to this uh, this uh, this I'd, I'd call him a fairly insider in the NBA on on All Star Weekend, and he um, and he was telling me about. I asked him like, why why hasn't Patrick Ewing coached yet uh, in the league, and is is there a chance that he might coach? And uh, the guy said uh, one NBA team actually sent out a team of scouts to scout Patrick Ewing like as an assistant coach. Uh, and they followed him to like six, seven games and like just see how the players interacted with him, what kind of response he got from the players, what he did in the timeouts and like 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 what his behavior was in the you know in, in the huddles and all that. They needed a team to scout a an team. They coach? sent a team to scout. What? Him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so uh, so so after like so after the seven games, he just came back with a report and said, basically Patrick Ewing in every timeout just stared at the dancer's ass. <laughs> there you go. All right, and they're well, like, "There's nothing there, guys. It's just not going to happen." Case closed. <laughs> that's like that's your inside scoop on the rapcast. You don't get that on any other show. That's a go. pretty good scoop. Yeah. That uh, that feels yeah. not accurate. Mystery solved. Mystery solved. The woman I do with the fuck. Hey, hey, I didn't say that's you talking, man. My, my hate is specifically for Matt Barnes on this podcast, not Patrick Ewing, man. I can't, I can't blame Patrick Ewing, man. I can't blame him. Yeah, Luis Scola. Yeah, Yo, I, th- I think we're done a, with Luis Scola. Okay, you want, you want to go I'm going to drop the stat, courtesy of uh, that guy, Daniel Hackett, who's a mm-hmm. great follow for stats and Raptor stuff on Twitter. The Luis Scola has been a minus, a net minus, in 11 straight games. 11 <laughs> straight games. He's, a, he's like a minus 97. In the Raptors' 11 <laughs> last last 11 games, meanwhile the Raptors as a whole have been plus 53 wow. over that stretch. So somehow the <laughs> just how how could a guy be that that bad? I think he's within a really successful he's, stretch. He's uh, he's Bargnani levels of bad right now. Uh, he knows what to uh, do. I think ex- at least I, I wouldn't say that. I no? wouldn't say okay, that. Okay. He doesn't look lost. He's just unable to be out there athletically. Bargnani was lost. Bargnani was lost. Wow. Okay, let's talk about Bargnani. Uh, he has he's going to be waived <laughs> if it hasn't ha- happened already by by the Nets. So Sean That's Marks, his, his first move is to first wave Bargnani. Yes. So <laughs> same as Masai Ujiri, right? First thing Masai Ujiri did was was wave Bargnani. Like that seems to be the first thing you do as a, as a new GM is find Andrea yeah. Bargnani and kick him out the door. Was that Brian Colangelo's first move too to draft Bargnani? Yeah, and that's why he didn't get the Nets job. Oh Hope yeah, that's that, true. like an up up close look on Bargnani. It's like. I can't trust you with this team. I know I'm not the best, but I know you're not either. <laughs> I don't trust you with Barnani. You might hand him another four-year extension. Yeah. Uh, it's like um. Anyway, so so is this the last we have seen of Andrea Barnani in the NBA, Sam? No. No. Wow. What? What? Who do you think is going to pick him up? Someone's going to give him the 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 vet men you... veteran minimum to like sit at the end of the bench and hope to God he can hit one three every four games for them. Who, Philly? I don't know. Dude, oh. there's a lot of people in the NBA who... Louis Scola, for example. I don't no, know. I'm, I'm not saying, like, okay. Louis Scola, I'm being facetious there. But there are people in the league where you're like, what are they still doing in the league? Who? Yeah, that's Barnani. Give me, give me, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> who, 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 other than Barnani, who? who who's Anthony on your mind? Bennett. Okay. All right. Fair He's point. at least young and Canadian. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. <laughs> that's true, right. yeah. He had a great pick and roll play against uh, against the Bulls, which 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 we have to talk about. But well, let's let's round off our Andrea Bargnani talk. Uh, Will is is this the last we have seen of the Italian stallion? I mean, you you got to think it's 
it's the last of Bargnani. I mean, he shot like are you, 18%. Are you committing, from the... Will? I don't hear you committing to that. I, I want to see Bargnani in the NBA. <laughs> like, it's great. <laughs> if he latched on with the Lakers, uh, the Kings, the Kings had interest in Bargnani last year. Pretty I can cool. see the Kings going for Bargnani this year. Hoping to lining up with Cousins open space. Look at that. There of you course. Go. There you go. All right. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if the Spurs picked him up and he won a championship? That'd be fantastic. Oh, God. Like an Austin Day style. That would be fantastic. Austin Day has probably eBayed that ring. <laughs> 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 oh shit. Uh, so you somebody mentioned Anthony Bennett in that last uh, discussion of ours, and um, I noticed that again against against the Bulls, he got called into play after uh, our man Luis Scola picked up like six fouls in like two minutes. And um, immediately he came in, and uh, he ran a pick and roll with Kyle Lowry and finished with aplomb at the rim. And then on the other end, the Bulls were paying him so much respect. They were, like, sticking to him, and that allowed, like, Corey Joseph to drive a couple times. And the Bulls announcers were like, why are the, why are the Bulls guarding this guy? Uh, <laughs> and they mistook him for somebody else. <laughs> He's killing him, man. They were just ripping him. Like, this guy is, like, an 18% three-point shooter, and you're covering him. Why? Anyway, so so – Whatever. That was the first half. He played well. Second half comes along. Uh, they get Bismack Biombo in there, who the Bulls aren't even guarding. And I'm thinking to myself, um, and I can't believe I'm saying this to myself during an NBA game. I'm like, you know what? They should put Anthony Bennett in because he might actually be helpful. <laughs> oh. Am I crazy? Am I crazy, guys? Yes. yes. Anthony Bennett is no quite possibly the worst NBA player. The worst player in the, in the NBA. Right now, that's Bargnani, isn't it? I don't know, man. I don't know. I think Bennett might be worse than Bargnani. <laughs> I, I'm is... not going to argue. I'm just, you know, devil's advocating here. Yeah, like Bargnani, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, no, Bennett so, is... No, I was wrong then. I shouldn't sure advocate for that. No, okay. I mean, what kind of message does that send? Your, uh, your, uh, your uh, Canadian <laughs> swingman had a great first half and finished on the pick and roll and spread the D and... and you know, and he had a, had a decent stint, and but then in the fourth quarter he doesn't get a get get a sniff, even though you kind of need him. What kind of message does that send? You never need you never need Bennett, sucks, man. What are you talking man. about? Okay. All right, that fine. Sucks. He's horrible. It validates what everyone knows. Okay, so so I, I got one more Bennett point here. Uh, yeah. You guys know Ronald Roberts, right? Ronald Roberts from the dealer. I know him personally. Yeah, I think he's Will's buddy. They hang out. We hang out all the time. Yeah. Uh, sorry, not Will. Blake's buddy is no, not Will's buddy. Yeah. No. So, I would uh, never see a Raptors down a five game. Yeah. Blake, Blake is out there every yeah. day. So uh, apparently up. he's he's been injured. He's been out for two weeks now. He got injured, so he hurt something. So he's out for two weeks, and he's still without an NBA contract. Even though he has had a fantastic D League season, I think he's one of the best players, if not the best player in the D League this year. Has not got a contract. I almost feel like just to even out the universe and do the right thing, the Raptors should just you know just just obey their own conscience, cut Anthony Bennett, and sign Ronald Roberts, because I am convinced Ronald Roberts Jr. gives you more today in the NBA than Anthony Bennett is doing. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, do it. You're not Anthony getting... Bennett's not giving you anything. Zero. Yeah. So you guys are you guys are with me on this one. It's not going to hurt the team. That's what I'm saying. It's not going to hurt. I mean, what are we hanging on to that, that, that somehow Anthony Bennett will find his way and become like a 3 and D shooter who's like who's going to save us or become an asset off the bench. It's not going to happen. You have a better chance of Ronald Roberts doing giving you like 3 minutes in when somebody gets in foul trouble and actually help the team out than, than what Bennett is doing. I just I just don't see why why we haven't rewarded this guy with a contract just yet. Yeah. I don't should. Know. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, it's either Roberts or some other guy that they need to. Basically, I think it's a done deal. I think they should definitely cut Bennett, sign somebody Anybody. Uh, maybe like a 10 day or something like that. You know, just give him a shot. Actually, even a 10 day doesn't really make sense now because basically a player has to be on your roster by March 1st to be playoff eligible. So yep. a 10 day wouldn't even really work. Mm -hmm. So you might as well just sign a guy. And I think Ron, Ronald Roberts is probably as good of any guy in terms of a guy in D League. Uh, the Raptors yep. obviously have that huge hole at power forward. And it's not like Ronald Roberts is going to come here and save the Raptors, but he maybe could. he does. Maybe his hand white sides it this year. Mm. That's the hope. That's the hope. Imagine, well, right? Sam, why don't you hang on to that thought? Because we're going to talk about the waiver wire and a bunch of other things uh, after these messages from our esteemed sponsor. Get gold today. 
Here's the scenario. You're injured in a collision and your insurance company is denying your claim. It happens far too often. If it happens to you, call me, Brian Goldfinger of Goldfinger Personal Injury Law. My team and I work for people just like you. We don't accept cases on behalf of insurance companies, so you and your family can make sure that you're in good hands. Visit goldfingerlaw.com and get us working for you. Welcome back to part two of Raptors Week. Did you guys enjoy the All Star Weekend, uh, guys? You guys any any uh, any lasting memories from All Star Weekend, Will? I saw Julia Okafor and Andre Drummond at a bar. Mm. Did you say hi? No, not really. No, okay. I didn't want to. No, which bar? I mean, uh, Citizen. Citizen. Sun King. Mm. Sam, you still go clubbing, or your or your wife has banned that? Uh, no, no, I get out once in a while. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, I got out that weekend. It was a uh... Interesting vibe in the city. Yeah, you see anybody? I I saw some players. I mean, no one special. I saw Okafor. I did see Drummond. I saw. Um, Were you at the same bar? <laughs> maybe I I was I, I hopped around a couple. Okay, okay. Um, no one important. I mean, what Drake was whining and dining. Everyone who needed to be whining and dining. Yeah, the yeah. one the, the one thing I noticed, man, I was at the arena and uh, like all the NBA players, man, they go up to Drake. He does not come to them. He's legend, bro. Yeah. Drake is He's legend. Worth his weight in gold. I mean, yeah. I feel like the Raptors fan base got really upset when he didn't tweet out his support of hashtag NBA yeah. vote for he, Kyle Lowry he and DeMar DeRozan. He knew what the vote was. He, like, if he needed to, he would have. He, he's, in, he's, in, he's on the ends, man. He's in the know, man. Yeah. He's in the know. He's, he's doing – he's the best ambassador you can get. Period. As far as for the Raptors. Uh He's doing a great job. Period. What do you mean? Behind anything? the scenes, man. You don't even need to know what's going on, all right? Well, there are women. There's champagne. Things are being promised. Rap careers are being minted. I'm telling you, man. He's well. He's, he's, he's going to make something happen. Yeah. Well, nothing has happened yet is what I'm saying. Like, I, I don't know if he's brought anything to the on-court product just yet, but uh, give it some time. Give, give him a year and a half or so, and maybe some, something happens. Even if it raises, what? even if it just raises the profile of the Raptors because he's here, mm-hmm. that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I enjoyed the enjoyed the dunk contest. It was a, uh, I was there, man. And as it was happening, man, it was. Uh, I think the the loudest cheer or the loudest support that that was there for a dunk was definitely the uh, Aaron Gordon dunk, the one with the the behind the legs. I think people. The chair people, up there. That was yeah, dirty. That was that was sick. Yeah. That Mississauga kid, or I don't know, where is he from? And oh yeah, yeah. anything outside of Toronto? I, I think Sudbury or somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it was uh, a way to alienate our non-Toronto listeners. Uh, Sam. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. Sorry, uh, you should edit that out. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna edit that. Out. It's, no. it's 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 uh, I I, I, forget... I apologize. I don't feel bad, but I apologize. I, I forget his name. Um, but yeah, he Jordan, threw down a yeah. Jordan Kilgannon. Jordan yeah. Kilgannon. Yeah, he's from Sudbury, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, he threw down a pretty vicious dunk. And, and what I noticed was all the players had that, like, you know, that reaction. They have, like, oh, yeah. whatever. Like, they, they all reacted that way to that dunk. And, uh, Are you telling me they weren't paying attention to what the coaches were saying during the timeouts of the All Star game? The critical planning? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, like the, I like the whole idea of, like, letting the players kind of design the plays, I think, add something to the, to the All Star game. I mean, it's just the coaches are doing even less work than they. Yeah. yeah. Than they normally they, do. Who cares who coaches the All Star game? Let Drake coach the All Star game. And Casey and, should have coached the All Star game though. Still. But dude, in in the post game press, you want to play Larry forty minutes. Like Tyron Lue, <laughs> Tyron Lue was a nice dude. Like I, I mean, I, he came in, humble dude, spoke gently. You know, he was like he seemed like a really nice guy. He like because we we kind of make him out to be this like douche who took away like David Blatt's position and is like this evil incarnate guy. But he was like totally cool. Like I have no problem with the guy. Yeah, but I mean, he was on the job for three days and it gifted him the. Yeah, but it's not his fault. He, it's not his fault. I mean, that's just yeah, the NBA rules. He could have turned weird. that down, though. He, yeah, he could have turned it down. They could have been like, okay, well, this is, you know, never has the the coach winning, you know, with the most wins been fired days before the All Star game either, right? So. Hey, here's an option. Go enjoy All Star Weekend in Toronto with the best players in the league. Have some champagne. Chill out with Drake, or just take the, the high on. road and just like uh, turn it down. What would you do, Sam? A, he didn't hang out with Drake. I was gonna say Let's Drake did not hang out with Tyron Lue. Let's he just did. put that out there. What's he gonna say with Tyron? Hey, that's it. Like you know, the head nod. Maybe, yeah. maybe don nod downwards. I don't know. Yeah. That's about it. Drake right. doesn't know who he is, bro. Okay. All right, guys, let's, let's let's get back to some basketball talk and uh, let's talk about uh, some angst amongst the uh, Raptor fans these days because uh, we weren't able to pick up anybody at the deadline. But there is the waiver wire, which is still there. 
and uh, there's a so there's some talk that the Raptors should have gone after one David Lee. Uh, Will, I know you have some uh, some heartfelt thoughts on this one. Sure. If you like Louis Scola 1.0, <laughs> you will love Louis Scola 2.0. Yeah, David Lee is basically Louis Scola at this point, which is kind of sad because he was like 18 and 9 and an All Star two years ago, um, before Draymond Green became you know a star and David Lee had no playing time at all. And look, David Lee is an interesting fit. Um, I don't really see a situation where you would want to play David Lee over no. any of the other Raptors power forwards, but I would. Prefer if they got a defensive stopper either at four or at three, you know. Um, but yeah, David Lee is probably the most talented out of all of those guys, and he eventually went to the Mavericks for I think two point one million, which I think is the biannual exception. Maybe mm-hmm. I don't know. Something he, like here's that. a guy who's older than David Lee and is still out there, even though Warriors are are, are favored to sign him. It, it's Anderson Verjo. Would you would yeah. you like to see him on the on the roster, Sam? I honestly didn't know that he was still in the league until he was part of that trade. He still got something in him. Will you guess Anderson Verja any interest there? No. I mean, I would be interested in terms of a guy who can move his feet a little bit, and he's like a can, mirror Johnson light. Can he though? Can he yeah, though kind now? of. I don't he's know. He flops a lot. He relied a lot on his athleticism that he doesn't have anymore. Yeah. Someone at uh, Cleveland.com wrote like a column saying the Cleveland Cavaliers did Anderson Virgil dirty by trading him, <laughs> which I thought was crazy because the Cleveland Cavaliers just handed him a three or $30 million contract last year. Yeah. Yeah. That makes just... no sense. Who else is out there? Is there, is there a website we could check for <laughs> NBA waiver wire? Okay. I, I'll give you some names. I'll list all off right, some names. All right. Andre Bargnani. All right. Uh, uh, JJ Hickson. Nope. Uh, Roy Hibbert suspected. Pile. Okay. Yeah, Roy Hibbert's expected to be available and maybe bought out. Um, maybe Kenya, uh, Kevin Martin seems like a lock to get bought out. Joe Johnson might get bought out. Not coming. Although here. he looks like he's going to the Cavaliers. Uh, yeah. That one's done. Although otherwise, yes, for sure, Joe Johnson. So do you great. hate Joe Johnson more if he goes to Cleveland? No, I don't. Yeah, I, no, I don't really care. If Joe Johnson came here, he would become John Salmon's 2.0. No. Come on. Yeah, Dwight Casey would love Joe Johnson. Are you kidding? Yeah, but he would perform. You'll never see Corey Joseph again in your life. He would perform. He, he would, yeah. Joe Johnson's still all right. Who else is available? Who else you got there? Oh, Steve Novak. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jason Thompson might get bought out if the Warriors want to basically get Anderson Verjao instead. What a bust he's been. Jason Thompson, yeah. One of the Raptors beat writers was saying the Raptors should really go get Jason Thompson. He's gonna move the needle big time. Huge, huge. Yeah. Is 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 Roy Hibbert? That's an interesting. Uh, yeah. Interesting pick. I mean. The only interesting name. He's a fair, fairly biggish name, but um, you know, just the style of play that the Raptors want to play. The last thing they want to do is add another lumbering seven footer in there, who's actually slower than probably Jonas. But he, he protects the rim a little bit better than. But everybody else on I think we got some room protection. I mean, with, uh, but but is enough exactly. for that? Exactly. Like who's ex- who, like who would you take out of the lineup to get Roy Hibbert in? Bennett. Anthony Bennett. Bennett. No, no. Yeah. I mean, no, no, not not the not. No, oh. I mean, Wouldn't the playing line, the rotation. Oh, yeah, whatever. well, realistically, you're not going to take any of these guys nope. up for any of these bio candidates. <laughs> I like how Anthony Bennett is the first name that pops up <laughs> every time you talk about. Yeah, him but I mean, you replace him with 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 Hibbert. Right? Mm-hmm. At least you have somebody who's not a net zero yeah. or negative every time he steps on the floor. Right? But but I Is think Ray... Hibbert, Hibbert expects to play with the team that he signs with. Maybe. Roy Hibbert shouldn't expect to do anything, have anything well, yeah. at this point, man. He flamed out with the Lakers. Like, this is a problem. Dude, he's uh, fallen hard in the last, like, 16 months, man. Do you remember when he was, like, one of the most valuable players yeah. in the league based on his defense points saved? Like, yeah. Kirk Goldsberry wrote this article, like, three years ago now at Sloan about how Roy Hibbert's, like, one of the most valuable players in the league based only on his defense. And I now that, uh, that playoff yeah. performance where he, where he had, like, zero points and zero rebounds for, like, three straight games or whatever it was, it, it kind of just destroyed his psyche. Yeah, there was also those rumors with Paul George. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, that's, that's not good. It always comes back to a woman, then. Yeah. Always. Uh, that's why you hate Matt Barnes. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about uh, the upcoming schedule. We have four games this week, and one of them is a big one. It's big. It's huge. It's so big we shouldn't even talk about the other three games. But we Lakers? Sh- no. Right, what is it? it? It's Cleveland, man. 
Uh, oh. Uh, okay. But let's talk about the Knicks. Uh, we're, we're at the Knicks on, on Monday night. And uh, Carmelo Anthony is on record saying that it'll be difficult to accept, quote unquote, um, uh, another missed season, uh, another missed playoffs. Uh, difficult to accept, he says. Um, I, th- I think he'll be fine accepting it after a little while, though. What do you think? Yeah. yeah I mean, this is what he signed him. up for. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, I think I think he knew exactly what he was getting into when he signed that extension with the Knicks. Like, there was no indication whatsoever that the Knicks were on the up at any point during the last seven years. And no. when he when he signed no. that extension, I think Sam he, he he knew he was he was in it for the money. He was in it to play in New York and winning didn't really. I don't, I don't want to say winning doesn't matter to him. I'm sure it does, but I think he knew the chance of success in New York was going to be like twenty percent. Absolutely. You know what's interesting for me? It, the people around him are different than the people who are around guys like Durant and and LeBron and and Wade and them. Those guys go. They opted for like the shorter contracts, so they maximize their dollar amount, gives them maximum flexibility to jump ship if things aren't going right. This guy goes to New York that has absolutely no assets, no ability to turn the team around, you know, in a sustainable fashion in the short term. Forces them to sign them all this money. Great. He could have went to Chicago. He would have been a perfect piece in Chicago. I mean, he could have went anywhere, basically, he wanted to go to win a championship, but he stayed there. He has absolutely no right to bitch and complain about shit, as far as I'm concerned. And, and he, I love him. He's one of my favorite players. I might have taken him over LeBron in that draft. Do you, do, you think he's, do you think he's under any pressure in New York to win? Of course he is. You, you really think so? I, I, don't, I, I think the Knicks fan are just defeated at this point. They want this whole era to be over and the Porzingis era to start. And I know that the Porzingis era and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the Carmelo era do not overlap. So I, I think they just want to get rid of Carmelo and just move on to, the, to whatever rebuilding they have to do. I don't think there's any pressure for the, for the Knicks to win. The reason they're, they're also all, Nick fans are upset is because their pick is going away too. And yeah. uh, it just, it, it's just – I don't think there's any pressure in New York the for – The pressure uh, though, the pressure is he, he needs to win. All his contemporaries have won championships, have made serious playoff runs. Except for him. If he gave a shit about that, he would have left when he was a free agent. Maybe. I, I think I think he cares more about money than that, so I don't think it's fair to say that he doesn't care about winning. Yeah. Um, but it weighs on him, and I, and I think he feels pressure. Mm. Will, your thoughts on uh, Carmelo Anthony and his uh, – and, and I'm saying that's, that's not acceptable for the, for the Knicks to miss the playoffs again. Yeah, I mean, sure. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, I mean, you can say what he wants. I mean, right. the Knicks are not good. Yeah. There's a very good chance they miss the playoffs again. And uh, I'm just excited about the Raptors pick, man. Yeah, man. It's going to be in the top 10. Oh, That's going to be very exciting. Let's check the Raptors' Republic ticker. Pick number eight. Whoa. Eight. It, w- eight. it would be the eighth pick. It's the highest it's been all year, isn't yep. it? Yep, yep. The stock is high right now. The stock is high. Wow. What's what's Denver picking right now? Like uh, seven? Let me just click. Seventh, let me yeah. just click on this man. Just go to rappersrolly.com. Look at the sidebar. Denver, New York, pick watch. So let's check up on it. It's, it's uh, right above the wildly unpopular Bismack Biombo blow money's uh, counter. Yeah. Which a lot of people every after every time Bismack Biombo has a good game, they're like, take this down. <laughs> he's trying his best for us. It's, just like, it's a joke, man. Come on, he's not a good finisher. All right, sorry. Keep going. Uh, projected pick: the Nuggets, who are at 22 and 34, number five. Fifth pick, uh, oh, the Knicks okay. at 24 and 33, uh, NBA rank 22nd, so the eighth pick they get. So it's so a three pick separate the two. Either one is good. Uh, let's just keep New York. Let's just hope New York keeps uh, keeps uh, going down, and uh, certainly we can help their cause on Monday night. They did beat us once uh, this season for twice. some reason. Twice, yeah, they, they beat us twice. Fuck sakes. Yeah. Seriously, the Raptors could really help their own cause by not losing oh, every single God. time to the Nuggets and Knicks. <laughs> So technically, if they had won those two games, this would be the sixth pick right now. Wow, oh, that's that's huge, man. That's huge. Well, dude, they're gonna shut down Melo soon. It's just gonna become a shit show. Yeah. For these two teams, it's yeah. gonna be a top five pick, man. Okay, so 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 no. prediction time here. Uh, it's Langston Galloway. Buddy, he killed us. We laughed at Langston yeah, Galloway. We laughed at Lance Thomas. They kill the Raptors. Killed us. Okay. Who, who's Lou that? Amundsen's probably gonna lit up the ra- light up the Raptors with a oh. nine and six. Give me your give me your prediction here, Will. It's I mean, I want I'm gonna predict the Raptors to win yeah. easily, but the Knicks, man, I don't know. It's it's at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, no, they're gonna win. Raptors are gonna win by twelve. 
Okay. Okay, sure. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll go with that. I, that sounds reasonable. Yeah. I just mean, like, that's probably the Vegas line, and that's what all logic should dictate, but who knows, man? The Raptors, when was the last time we went to the MSG and DeMar DeRozan did a 360 in transition and missed a dunk? Uh, and that, and that didn't, uh. didn't that one dunk cost us that game? Because we yes, lost, for, like, they lost in overtime. And then we faced the Wizards because we were, like, one game less than whoever the hell. And that yep. dunk came back to basically sweep us in the playoffs. I mean, Think yeah, a, a lot of things happen. Think about the butterfly effect. Those things, the but butterfly sure, effect. yes, those those things happen. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so uh, Knicks suck. Okay, all right. So then we got uh, Minnesota, who we lost to prior to the All Star break. This one's at home, so um, so Andrew Wiggins uh, returns. By the way, he got a lot of ovation at uh, at All Star yeah. weekend. They they actually People still think we're gonna get him. Yeah. So uh, during the uh, the Rising Stars Challenge, uh, when they uh, when they focused on uh, Wiggins during the national anthem, uh, the crowd kind of forgot there was a national anthem going on and just started cheering wildly. It was it was a, it was a little bit a uh, little bit weird, but it was it was good. He got a lot of a uh, lot of respect from the arena. But did you guys notice uh, the All Star Game national anthem with um, Nelly Furtado? Nelly, Nelly Furtado was a bit what? of a, a bit of a crush, man. And uh, she she kind of put a remix on the anthem, which is kind of a no no. Yeah, oh, you, you don't mess with it. Just Sounded like I was singing the anthem. And she looked, and her haircut was all weird. Uh, Blake tweeted that it looked like Joe Pesci's haircut. Oh, so bad. <laughs> so true, so bad. Yeah, that was, a, that was a bit of a downer. She's a great artist in her time, though. In her time? Was, her was. Time. was. Yeah, she was, yeah, she was. Yeah. Next time, we got to get Sade back in. Yeah, do it. All right. Love Sade. Right. Okay. Uh, Minnesota, though this one's at home, uh, we have lost to the, the, as I said, just mentioned uh, to the to the Wolves. Uh, what do you see happening here, uh, Will? Wh- who are you looking most forward to see here, other than Wiggins? Car Anthony Towns. Yeah, man. Yeah. Cat is. Yeah. He's having quite possibly the best rookie season since Tim Duncan, and he's three years younger than Duncan was when Duncan was a rookie. Like it is, he's an insanely good player. I don't just tell Raptors fans that Cat's good. He had like thirty-five and twelve against the Raptors in the previous game. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, look, the Timberwolves—they're not that skilled. They don't run their sets really well. They're kind of undisciplined. You know, it's, it's like any young team. But what they have is a lot of athleticism. Oh, that too. And uh, yeah, I mean, you get those really quick forwards, and then you get Louis Scola and JV. Yeah. And 36% from three he's shooting, and he looked fluid in that uh, skills yeah. contest, man. Like him yeah. and DMC. I mean, DMC looked a little uh, uncoordinated, but this guy, you'd think he was a guard at seven foot. Yeah, he's got those skills. Yeah, He's going to be better than uh, Anthony Davis. Wow. All Anthony right, Davis so. today had 59 and 20. Yeah. 59 and, and six 20. Assists. That's, yeah, the six <laughs> assists were the only other six baskets made by the Pelicans, probably. Yeah. That's a bold comment on the night that Anthony Davis has 59. <laughs> yeah. He's going to have more than 59. I don't know about that. Yeah. So, Sam, I'll, I'll let you analyze and break down this one down to the details for us. Go ahead. Minnesota versus Toronto. Yeah. Raptors will take that easily. Okay. Got it. Raptors Minnesota. Again. Okay. Yeah. 12 sounds about good. Okay. Yeah. I, I do think Cat's going to have a better career than Anthony Davis. His injuries will pay a big, big play, play a big part of that. Mm-hmm. Because of injuries, they'll have a better career. He's also on a better team. Like, there's so much more talent on Timberwolves yeah, than there are on the Pelicans. Really like, the Pelicans, I hate the way they're just boxing him in with these horrible players. It reminds me of LeBron early yeah. on. They're going to sign Iron Newble soon. Oh, Iron Newble, remember that? Wally yeah. Zerbiak? Yeah. yeah, man. Ben Wallace is going to save the Cavaliers. Shaq. Can <laughs> Shaq? Yes. Oh, yeah. I honestly wouldn't have come back to the Cavs if they did me dirty like that, too. All right, so let's let's skip over this stuff and, and get to Cleveland. This is the big one here. Uh, the Raptors have uh, they beat the Cavs once, I think, but then they got blown out in Cleveland. They've lost to the Bulls. Uh, they're trailing Cleveland by what two games right now? I want to say, Will is that is that what it looks like? No, it's four games. It's more, now. it's more. Okay. No. Uh, and uh, four games. So so big game coming up here, man, in uh, in Toronto. So if if we lose this, what does it mean if we lose this? Nothing. Yeah, it means nothing. means nothing. We know the Raptors are worse than the Cavs. Okay. We know yeah. this. We know this. The Detroit game is more important, in my opinion. So what are you what do what do you expect from this game? The Raptors to hang? What if they get blown out? Doesn't that kind of put a take the shine off the record a little bit, man? Not more than the Bulls loss. That's true. Yeah, the Bulls loss is debilitating for the Raptors. Yeah. Yeah. Even it's just mentally too. 
And then Minnesota before that. Those are those are two bigger losses than losing to like the third best team in the league. You guys are kind of killing my take on this one, man. Sorry, man. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Well, look, we get... we'll, we'll be the Blake Murphy of this podcast. Okay. Uh, the the Raptors. I mean, okay. What would have to happen for the Raptors to beat the Cavaliers? I think I think uh, Tristan Thompson has to have under eight rebounds. LeBron All has right. to shoot under forty percent. Uh, and this year. and yeah. Kyrie Irving has to outplay. Sorry, uh, uh, Kyle Lowry has to outplay Kyrie Irving by like two to one. Okay, that wow. that's possible. Which okay. that's possible, but that doesn't have to be that badly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So that that's, what, a that's big DeMar DeRozan game. Big. Yeah. Yeah. Huge. Who who's who's he up against here in uh, in Cleveland? Who like who's guarding him? Probably LeBron. Yeah. Oh, that's a problem. Uh, LeBron probably doesn't want to guard him for most of the game because he wants to no, conserve no. his energy. But when it matters, LeBron's guarding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. DeRozan well, has made a lot of hard. improvements, but <laughs> he won't do shit against LeBron. Mm. I mean, come on. It's LeBron. I would have thought it was uh, it was J.R. Smith that, that that would check him, but whatever, fine. But, but yeah, but when it matters, that's the one thing with LeBron. Like you put him on anybody, and uh, he can probably shut him down. Uh, interesting matchup to watch here. Interesting, but I mean painful. Uh, Kevin Love versus uh, Louis Scola. Both both having uh, you know, I think Kevin Love is having a decent se- season, but uh, you know it's uh, he's he's had better seasons in the past. But Kevin Love versus Louis Scola here. Do the Raptors make a lineup change here to counter Kevin Love here, man, or no? No. 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 Rationale behind that? Cleveland does a good job of uh, of neutering Love as it is. <laughs> Yeah, well, sure. They do. They do. Yeah, they, yeah, kind of. Although, I mean, hey, Tyron Lue's done a little bit better job of managing love. I, th- I thought he looked pretty good today against the Thunder. Yeah. So. T- 29 points, 9 of 18 shooting. Not bad. Yeah. A lot of free throws. Yeah. Um, surprise. Uh, who, who's the bench guy from Cleveland you expect to burn us? Nobody. It, it's, it's between Della Vadova for me. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and, and Mozgov, one of those one of those two. Mozgov had a pretty decent game today, eleven points, five or seven off the bench. Channing Fry might be ready for that game. Mm. Yeah, he could pose some problems. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, the Raptors bench is better than Cleveland's bench. I mean, I hope basically what I hope happens is the Raptors bench outplays the, Cle- the Cavaliers bench significantly, and then their starters come in and you know take the lead back, and hopefully at the end of the game. If like LeBron is having a cold shooting night, if Love's having a cold shooting night, the Raptors might be able to squeak one out. Who knows? Should the Raptors in this game, knowing it's a home game, you got the crowd behind you, uh, they need a win, they need a statement win. Do you try something different against LeBron? Like, do you actually go ahead and actually throw a lot of double teams at him? Because generally the Raptors don't do that. That's that's one of those things they just don't like. They don't like double team. Um, any anything different you do do with LeBron here now that you don't have Demari Carroll? Do you just go go ahead, James Johnson and Terry Ross try to guard LeBron? Like, don't you have to do something different here? Haven't double teams not really worked against LeBron in the past? So, like, I mean, he makes the right plays all the time. He finds people to roll open. I don't know. I, I, I if I was going to do anything, I'd let him shoot forty shots. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, that that'd be my strategy. I don't know how well that would work, but you know, I don't want him. I don't want him creating and. First, first teammates, you know, off the bounce. That that seems way more dangerous for me. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, LeBron's not his his jumper's kind of broken this year. So hopefully you play off LeBron. I, there's no secret to being LeBron, but hopefully you play off LeBron. Hopefully James Johnson has a a decent game where he's actually viable on offense. Have you noticed recently James Johnson can't even make layups? What's yeah, up he with blew that? like two of them today. I don't know. Like he he gets like he can't believe he got that close to the rim. And uh, he just blows it in excitement. He blows yeah, it. he was so good. He was so good at driving layups last year, but this yeah. year not so much. But yeah, you know, hopefully James Johnson stays within himself. I think he really gets up for that LeBron matchup. And uh, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't double team LeBron either, just because the Cavaliers do have a lot of good spot up shooters. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, X factor for the Raptors in this one. Anybody? Corey Joseph. Lowry. Yeah. Corey Joseph. Yeah, I'd say I'd say Corey Joseph. Yeah. yeah. Shut down Kyrie Irving. Corey. Yeah, he's a. I think somebody posted an article, somebody from SB Nation, I think, about uh, experts who like who leave the organization and proceed to have good careers. There's like nobody except Corey Joseph. Like he's the only yep. guy who's who's gone out of that system and actually produced something. Like the the old, there's just nobody else, man. It's just like what, George Hill, I guess, kind of comes to mind because he's been okay, but he got traded. But you know, I guess George Hill counts as well. He's right? had a good career, man. Yeah, I think George Hill's he's on. Been the, well in, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was uh, Mike Prada of the SB Nation. That was a really good breakdown he did of Corey yep. Joseph and what he does well. Another player who has left the Spurs and then had a better career is Louis Scola, actually. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Oddly enough, yeah. Steven Jackson? No, nah, I don't think Steven yeah. Jackson had a much of a career after he left the Spurs. What was he with? Dude, it, that was the upset of the, the, the Dallas Mavericks in, what, 2008? I'm saying yeah, once he, he was left. Seven, yeah, yeah. He was the integral part of that. Okay. All right. Captain Jerk. Okay, so so prediction on the on the Cleveland game. Mm, Raps lose by twelve. Six. It's okay. a close game. Six. Raps by three. Oh. All right. Why is this? Demar Derozan, they, huge game. Yeah, Demar Derozan, huge game. They need to start turning around. I mean, at this point, we got. They're either gonna show what they have. They're cruising. I don't know. It feels it feels like it could be a, a trap game for mm-hmm. Cleveland. By the way, did you guys notice that uh, Washington played on a back to back to back? Yeah. W- what's happening here? Like, are we doing back to back to back? No, no, no. no. That was uh, that was that giant that was snowstorm storm. that hit yeah, snowmageddon. Snow oh, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's fine. <laughs> and they decided to give him a, a triple header. <laughs> <laughs> I see. You got snowed in. Here's your reward. Um. Okay, so finally it's it's Detroit who uh, who we already beat. Game of the week. Uh, game of, well, what do you think is game of the week? Three times now. What do you think is game of the week, Sam? I mean, they could potentially be a first. They could potentially be a first round playoff uh, matchup for us. Mm-hmm. I f- I feel like they improved over the the trade deadline. Brought in Harris. They cleaned up some. Uh, they got rid of Jennings. Um, and something else happened. I can't remember right now. Dude, it's not good. Like, like, Eunice. Like, like, like the Raptors yeah. are are our second seed right now, and they're gonna stay there. Four games back to Cleveland, four and a half yeah. ahead of Boston. It, it looks like we're kind of locked in there. And you look at six, seven, eight right now. Who, who do you want to play? Hawks, Hornets, Bulls, and ninth are Pistons. Like there is None no, there is no. no easy first round matchup here, man. The only one that's kind of easy or matchup wise to me is maybe Indiana, but not even that. They just no, like you almost want the Wizards to make the playoffs and go to number seven so you can face them. It's it's like every no, other you don't team. Want the Wizards. You don't want the you don't Wizards. Want the Wizards. Okay, you don't want anybody. Yeah, what's wrong with me? First yeah. of all, no. you uh, want to you want to have a good showing against a team that you're going to be potentially meeting in the first round. And we've had success against the Pistons, but they're a little bit different now. I mean, they haven't integrated Tobias yet, so there'll be some time for that if it even happens this season. But I'd like to have another win against them. Who do you who do you want in the playoffs, Sam? Atlanta, Charlotte, the Bulls. I want the Bulls. You want the Bulls? You want the Bulls? I know, weird, right? What? What? Well, explain that. They just they fall apart in the playoffs. They don't have Noah. They have you know seventy percent of Derrick Rose. Who knows how good Butler's going to be? I'm just saying over a seven game series, good, yeah. the Bulls have a lot of have a lot of potential to be just chipped away and beaten. Like they, they they're not the team that they were. Yes, that yes that loss was debilitating. Yes, it was upsetting. But we're talking about a seven game series against a team missing some of their guys. Like you know, who knows where Meritage is going to be? They need these guys to win playoff games. All right, Will. Same question over to you. Atlanta, Charlotte, Chicago, or Detroit? Ah uh, man, I I guess Charlotte. Will be probably my ideal matchup. Um, really? I'm not really that afraid of the Pacers. No. I think the, uh, the Pacers. I, I, I didn't say the Pacers. Defense, apparently, I didn't say I didn't say oh. the Pacers. I said Hawks, Hornets, Bulls, and Pistons. Okay, though I guess number two is the Pistons. I'm not that afraid of the Pistons either. I'm not afraid I, of the I, Hawks. They just don't scare me. I, I, I mean, I, I okay, just, you have Paul Millsap and now Horford on one end, and then you have Jonas and Scola. Dude, it's gonna be bad. I mean, bad for I, think, I, I mean, think, our backcourt is so much better than theirs. Exactly, but yeah. It is, but I mean, Teague's not bad. Corver can light it up. They're not, they're not nothing. Other than Kent Bazemore, I just don't see anybody who can pose defensive problems for the Raptors guards there. That's my thing there. <laughs> Kent yeah. Bazemore is not going to pose problems. No. Well, whatever. He's supposed to be a bit of a D guy, but, you know, he plays a little hard, but whatever. But other than him, I just don't see how... Like who can guard Lowry or or DeRozan? Like, 
Yeah. So so if I had to pick, I'd say the Hawks and the Raptors have had a decent record against the Hawks too. And and the Hawks sure. yeah. and the Hawks have this like mental fragility where once the playoff comes, they can they barely like they should not even have won that one series last year. And they uh, you know. But they did. But they did. But I, I just I'm not I'm not they scared won of the two Hawks. Last year. Not mm. scared of the Hawks. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Hmm. I, I I think you're underrating them. Okay. Says so the guy Here's who wants to face the Bulls. Yeah. Yeah, a, a crippled Bulls team. I'd take a crippled team over a team with freaking Millsap and Horford up front. Mm-hmm. They might be healthy by then, though. That's the, that's the scary thing. If somehow the Bulls manage to tread water and then Jimmy Butler comes back. Why ugh. would Jimmy Butler not come back? He's coming back, but I'm just saying. He's, he might not he's be 100%. Like three months. Miritich has three like weeks. melanoma or something. Like he's got no, he's, he's got an appendectomy. Or he had an appendectomy. Yeah, and, and he had some sort of like blood clotting craziness. Oh. Yeah, dude. Trust me, I, I, I've been wanting him to come back because he was an important part of my fantasy team. <laughs> Which, by the way, you're destroying me this week, man. Dude, I'm killing you this week, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're representing, though. We're representing in that league. Yeah, yeah. we are, yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he's got hematoma. He's out uh, two to three weeks. But yeah. still, that's, that's plenty of time to recover, man. I, I just made, you're making it sound like they got the bubonic plague yeah. there. I mean, but it's, it's also, just... He was out for three weeks. Like, you, 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 you're, you're missing out on timing. Mm-hmm. chemistry that happens you know like the, okay you're not gonna come back after a month and a half off and think everything's gonna be okay just wait till wait till carol comes back and he disrupts some of our lineups okay all right okay i think i think we've gone on for more than an hour and um that's a miracle man we had not that much to talk no, about no we did not so uh sam i'll let you get back hopefully you're not in trouble no i'm good you're good will thanks Sipping for coming on, on doing double duty on the podcast of course, check me out uh, next uh, what Thursday? Yeah. Thursday comes Friday, out. Yeah, check Friday. me out Thursday again with Blake. Mm-hmm. Well, when are you gonna drop an article for us, man? We're uh, it's not we happening, don't... guys. I miss wow. you guys, though. I miss no, you guys. I mean on your blog, on your blog. Oh, oh, yeah. Hey, I just dropped one over the weekend, man. Yeah. Put me in, oh, put me please. in that morning coffee. Yeah, yeah man, you'll be in. Yeah. All right, uh, oh. listener, thank you for listening. Uh, if you have some time. Uh, do go to iTunes and rate the podcast uh, and do check out Will and Blake's Friday podcast, the Rappers Weekly Extra podcast. What a great name. Uh, and also, uh, if you have the means to do so, we do have a Patreon or Patreon. How do you say that, Sam? Patreon? Patreon? Patreon. Patreon. Patreon.com slash Rappers Republic, where we are essentially um, collecting money, I guess, for so that we can keep the site running and produce the great content that we do and keep you guys happy. Once again, rate the podcast. Tell us what you think. Uh, yeah. Other than that, Till next week, thank you for listening.